Amen. We're going to start with the teachings. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. By God's grace, we finish on time. We just flow. What God has said, raise me a holy altar in some of the communication with God when we are approaching time uh, in 2015. And we were getting ready uh, in one worship set up like this. We are already starting with teachings. Uh, in one worship, we were worshiping in church, worshiping, worshiping instrument, powerful. And all of a sudden, for me, it was quiet. I can see with my eyes, I'm seeing, wondering what's, what's going on. I am not hearing anyone. I am not hearing anything. I am only seeing people, they are all in worship mode, in a worship setup. Are we together? Then there now a voice raised me a holy altar. When that encounter happened, then again I can hear the music like that. Not in a vision, worship setup like that. Are we together? So we are here and trust God, Yahweh will do that. And whatever you take the service, we follow how the service goes when it's time we leave. Are we together? So that we are a spirit-led church. Hallelujah. Amen. And let us flow according to how God does it in an orderly way, according to his pattern. We flow in that way in the name of Jesus so that we have a yeah, great time in the presence of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we have been on this subject by God's grace. Today we will conclude, but as we look again, it's expanding to something else and that which we will bring as time proceeds. But we've been dealing with season before God comes through for you. Hallelujah. And we say, what do you do? What happened in that season? One of the key things we say uh, in the order of teachings, we were saying part one, we need to develop a prayer lifestyle and maintain that prayer because that is the channel you are opening up for your way to intervene and interfere in your affairs and bring about the turnaround you are trusting in in Jesus' name. And by prayer, we are opening up a channel of communication to Yahweh. Let us hear his voice. Let him guide us. And by prayer, we are saying we are dependent on you. While I am in this season, I am crying out to you. That what David said, as for me, I will cry out. I will pray in the name of Jesus. And part two, we say is in that season, be serving. Develop and maintain a culture of serving. Serving God and serving his people. Part one and two, they are online. And last Sunday, we dealt with part three of say, in that season, work on your talent, work on your gift, refine them, sharpen them, and at the same time, remember to develop a godly character because these things they are the one who will help you when the curtain is open. I'm saying to my wife this morning, I have the sense it says if we are beyond the curtain but the curtain is about to be open and you have, if you have been in a, in, a, in, a, in a venue where there is concert or there is whatever the performance, things that are happening is they are beyond the curtain. The masses are there waiting. They don't know what is happening here. Are we together? But when the curtain open and you are there, you are the one now in the limelight. How we together? That is almost the essence of this teaching. And when you are in the limelight, what are the things that will make you maintain there? It is the prayer culture you've developed. It is the serving that you've developed. It is the godly character that you have refined and worked on that will make you be able to sustain when the limelight is on you. Are we here together? And part four today, he's saying, when you end that season, by God's grace, we're ending it today, but let's see how it goes. When you're in that season, be aware that God is with you. When you are in the season where you are waiting on God, God, where are you? You need to be aware that God is with you. Rest assured that you are not alone. The Lord, Yahweh, is with you. Hallelujah. All my note when I write Lord, it's always with capital letter. If I'm the one who will type something on Facebook on the church page, when you see the Lord, it has to be in capital letter because this word Yahweh always rings. So in my note is in capital letter. Wherever I will send somebody a prayer request, say, Oh Lord, the Lord has to be capital letter because 
because it is Yahweh that I am invoking in there. I'm showing you my secret. I'm revealing what is there. You will see when in the Bible it's like. So it, when I get to it, I can't write in small letter. It has to be in capital letter. I am saying you, it does not mean when you write in small letter you have reduced God. It, the way it has hit me, it has to be in capital letter. That's what I am saying in the name of Jesus. So in that season, rest assured that Yahweh is with you, is on your side. He has already said in many parts of scriptures, including Hebrews 13 verse 11, verse uh, 5, that I will never leave you nor forsake you in the name of Jesus. So God is with you in the season where you are waiting for him to come through. God is with you in the season before your breakthrough comes. God is with you in the season before the curtain open and you are the one in the limelight. God is with you. Somebody shout amen. Act number 7 verse 9. Act, the act of the apostle. There is a guy called Stephen. When he was being interviewed in the council, they accusing him of blasphemy. He start bringing to them and bringing teachings, bringing down from Abraham and taking up to the Messiah until the council could not resist such a teaching. It cut to their heart. They reacted by taking Stephen out and they stoned him to death. But while they are stoning him, he says his eyes open. He could see the heavens open and seeing Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father. And a prayer before the Spirit left his body, he said, God must forgive them because they do not know what is happening. Let them, this sin not count on them. But in one of the things he was saying prior to that is this. I'm creating a portion in verse 9 and 10. He said, and the patriarch becoming envious did what? Sold Joseph into Egypt. They saw the patriarch in me. He's talking about the forefather, the father of faith in them, the, the head the, that through whom God has become a channel into the nation of Israel. Meaning the patriarch there in the Bible, especially in, in the Old Testament, referred to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the 12 sons of Jacob. So here he's saying those patriarchs, meaning now in this case, the sons of Jacob, sold their brother, sold Joseph into Egypt. Look what follows next. But God was with him. They sold Joseph in Egypt, but God was with him. It may not make sense. How can I be sold into slavery, but I am being sold together with God? I hear it. I am being rejected. When I am being rejected, God is with me. When I am being sold, God is with me. When I am being humiliated, God is with me. When I am going into chain, into fetters, when you read Psalm 107, he's talking about when he's going, he's, he's fetters, he's tied like that as a slave, the neck is tied. And leaving the land of, uh, uh, of Israel into Egypt, in the way he's going, he, Joseph, in that, in that frustration, God is with him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God was with him. Verse 10. When the time came for the curtain to be opened for God to intervene, God and delivered him out of all his troubles. Not only that, and gave him favor and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he, the king of Egypt, made him, Joseph, governor over Egypt and all his house. Glory to Jesus. But prior to that, it was his being sold. Same as a slave and rejected by the brothers. When he get to Egypt, he's also rejected. Accused falsely there. When he get to Egypt, also he's being accused falsely. Thrown into jail. He interpret dreams, but these people forgot about Joseph for two years. But something God has said the other day, there are times where people forget you, it's because it's part of God's plan for them to forget you. Hallelujah. Because if they had remember Joseph the next day, and Joseph is released from prison the following day, 
He cannot be made governor of Egypt. It was not by God's time. So the attack of darkness that causes people to be forgotten. Those we pray, warfare prayer. But there are those is God's plan for you to be forgotten. We say, Lord, I pray for encouragement. I pray for strength in this season when I am hidden. Because there is an hour where the curtain will be open. And I will be the one in the limelight. How are we together? In the Bible, the book of our faith, the Bible, contain, mm, what again, say principle. They contain patterns. They contain the ways of God that we learn and see their application in our individual life as we walk with God. Are we together? Now, one of the characters in the Bible that demonstrate some of the ways and the principle and the pattern of God in the working of a person is called Joseph, when you understand and look at the journey of Joseph, is God showing us the journey of life before your season of greatness comes. Hallelujah. That's why you will see, for instance, if you are in Bible school or Bible study and lover of the Bible, you realize, like, especially maybe in the book of Genesis, Genesis alone, they dedicate 13 chapters in which the main character is the person of Joseph. From Genesis 37 right through to verse chapter 50, skipping uh, verse 38, 37, 39, going up to 50. In all those uh, historical narrative, the main character there is a person of Joseph. Now, when we come to the book of Acts 7, verse 9, the Bible is summarizing to us the journey. It says, when he was, as he was, there was a time in which he was sold as a slave. And the patriarch, verse 9, I'm reading, and the patriarch becoming envious sold uh, Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him. That thing hit me. But God was with him. From human perspective, how can you go into such a suffering and humiliation, but at the same time, God is with you? It does not make sense. How am I, why am I being rejected? And I'm not being rejected by anybody. I am being rejected by my own blood brothers. And But while they are rejecting me, God is with me. With me, why I am being humiliated, God is with me. Why I am being sold as a slave, God is with me. Why they throw me into the pit and say, We'll tell our fathers that a wild animal eat him, God is with him. The pit could not hold him, and they take him out of the pit. They say, Let's sell him to the Ishmaelite. When they are selling him to the Ishmaelite, they gave them money. God, Joseph is looking at them, it is painful, but the Bible says, God is with Joseph. Joseph. Are you hearing this? And when on the journey from Israel now going to Egypt and when he's going as a slave with fetters on his feet uh, I'm just summarizing is in Psalm 107 as well. I'm just summarizing is with fetters on his feet and being carried there. The Bible is saying God is sending him ahead so that he may save many people alive. How can it be ascending when I am a slave? How can it be ascending as, as if I am a criminal? How can God be sending me in this way? But in the ways of God, there is something locked in there which I'm going to touch on shortly. God is sending him that way. And when he gets into Egypt, they sold him to a guy called... Uh, uh, Potiphar. And Potiphar was the captain in the army of, uh, of Egypt, one of the Pharaoh's uh, commanders. So they sold him to Potiphar. He started working for Potiphar. I mean, Genesis 39, verse 1 to 5. In, then in Genesis 39, verse 1, one is being sold. There is a nice description, I think, in verse 3. He said, God was with Joseph. It does not make sense, God. How can you be such a God? Are you a mean God? I am being rejected. I don't have anything. I'm in a foreign land, but you are saying you are with me. He's being sold, but God was with him. And when he's working in Potiphar's house, but Potiphar noticed there is something distinct about this guy. Everything is touching his working. So let me make him overseer, master over everything I have in the house and in the field. And the Bible says, I'm still in Genesis 39, verse 1 to 5. God 
bless the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Write it down. You read. We touch on it, I think, during the week as well. And God was blessing the uh, Potiphar's house, the Egyptian's house, for Joseph's sake. And because this thing was upon Joseph, and one of the promises of God is that he will bless the work of your hand. And in the past, we've dealt with that God blessing the work of your hand. Whether you are working for Absa, is blessing the work of your hand, though it's Absa benefiting. Are you hearing? In the name of Jesus. So in all these things, is is in pain, is a slave, and while working there, Potiphar's wife so an opportunity this guy is good looking how about uh, let me make move Joseph refused when he refused he being accused later uh, and, and then he is thrown into jail while he's in jail God is with Joseph so in your season when you are hidden it's not that you are by yourself God is with you you will understand it shortly as we proceed God was still with Joseph in jail. And in jail because we say in your season while you are waiting for God intervention, continue to serve. While in there he serve, is promoted as the captain in charge. While in there is serving, you see these people, their countenance is down and say what is going on? He said we had dream. Joseph saw an opportunity to sharpen and refine his gift because he's in a season where he's waiting for God to intervene. Are you hearing? And he began to interpret dreams. And he said, when you go out, remember me, but they forgot about him. Well, though they forgot about Joseph, God was with Joseph. I hear God was still with Joseph until it was time. Sometimes I know as children of God, when you are in the season where you are waiting on God, Lord, I am waiting on you for my marriage. There was a revelation, but nothing has happened. I am waiting on you for my total deliverance against attack of darkness, against witchcraft powers. I'm waiting that in that season, God is with you. You are being attacked, but God is with you. It does not make sense. I don't know if it's making sense if you apply your logic. God is with you, but you are being attacked. God is with you, but you are being rejected. God is with you, but you are being uh, denied. God is with you, but they are accusing you falsely. God is with you, they throw you in jail. God is with you, they are forgetting about you. God is with you, your family rejects you. How come God, it does not reconcile to a human mind. You are with me, and at the same time, all these things are happening. Rest assured that indeed God is there. You are in a season called a hidden season. A season in which you are waiting on God for the curtain to open, for your breakthrough to manifest in the name of Jesus. It's a matter of time. When let go back to Acts 7 verse 9. And the patriarch becoming envious saw Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. Rejected, God was with him. And when it was now time for divine intervention, the Bible summarized for us in verse 10, and it delivered him out of all his trouble. There is always a time, as I have said time and again, when God intervenes in your life and your trouble come to an end. Somebody shout amen. There is always a time where your story changes. I know you have been rejected. I know people don't like to associate with you because nothing is happening for you. You are hidden. You are in your season prior to God coming through for you. In that season, and you face rejection. God is with you. It's a matter of time for God to intervene. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So he show us here, Joseph, you are in trouble, but there will be a time where Yahweh will intervene and your trouble will come to an end. Not some trouble, all is trouble. Verse 10, verse 10 and, 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 and deliver him out of all his trouble. All his trouble. Every trouble. He delivered Joseph, and deliverance is not ending there. And he gave him favor 
and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh and king, king of Egypt and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. The fulfillment of what God says. And remember in Genesis 37 God has revealed through dreams about how Joseph will be elevated to a place of preeminence. He saw the sun, the moon and the eleven star bowing to him. All of those were divine communication. But if by, by from from the communication to the fulfillment here, he went through rough places. That's what I am calling a season before God comes through for you. Some of the things that happen there are not nice to the eyes. Some of the things that people go through those seasons may not be appealing. But the assurance that you need to have is that in that season, you are not alone. God is with you. In that season, you are not alone. The Lord is with him. In the same way, God came through for, uh, for Joseph and his story changed. God shall come through for you. Your story will change in the name of Jesus. I keep on hearing this from morning. It's like you are beyond the scene and there is curtain here. People in the audience, they don't know who's there. They may know somebody who's there, but they don't know what you are doing. They don't know you are preparing. They don't know you are anxious. They don't know how many nights you have not slept. They don't know what has happened. They don't know how you got there. Maybe you came just uh, by running, by coming, by walking. They don't know. But when the curtain opened, everyone, the, the thousand, the millions of people watching on TV, all of a sudden, you are the one in the limelight. That's what is happening here. He was in jail yesterday, but today, the whole of Egypt is the one in charge. How did it happen? The curtain were open and a season of greatness has appeared in the name of Jesus. While you are in your season of waiting, you are not alone. God is with you. God is with you. And I need you to note these few things before we pray and conclude on this. While God is with you, please note that there are things that God hides you from. Before your season of breakthrough comes, before your elevation comes, there are things that God himself is hiding you from. He is hiding you from. Why? Because he's preparing and protecting you at the same time. God hides you before your season of manifestation comes. Why? When we read the other day, my wife read, we can read again. Isaiah 49 verse 2. In that Isaiah 49 verse 2 on the screen. In that season, God is hiding you. Why? Because he's preparing. He's polishing you. He's making you ready. And he doesn't want you to appear before time. He's talking about the prophecy on the Messiah, which is applicable to us as well when we look at the pattern of how God works. He say, and he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has done what he then me and made me a polisher, meaning he's preparing while I am hidden. In his quiver, he has hidden me. In that season, God is with you. And at the same time, God is hiding you from yourself, from people, even from the devil himself. God is hiding. In that season, God hides you of what he's doing. That's why when somebody, you are in that season, you are frustrated, you go into prayer and fasting. God, when he brings a reassurance, he shows you the picture where he's taking you. But where you are to, where you will get to, you don't know. He's hiding some of those is doing because it's called the hidden wisdom of God where God does not reveal a to Z of everyone in their journey of life. It's not everything God will reveal. And the reason of that is hiding, number one, for yourself because he doesn't want you to manifest before time. Because you're going to ruin yourself. Number two is hiding you because he doesn't want people to know about what he's doing and planning to do through you. Because people can make you and give you a platform before your time. And you're going to mess up. God is hiding you. Number three why he's hiding you is so that the enemy devices are not on you to abort the working of God in your life in the name of Jesus. Because the devil 
devil is not all knowing. The devil is not only knowing. He does not know everything as in the wisdom of God or referred to as the hidden wisdom of God. He hides people in that season. Is with them. Things are painful. Things are hurtful. Things are frustrating. But he's hiding you because he knows your tomorrow you will celebrate and all this pain you will forget them. Joseph forgot all of those pain. His heart was at peace. He forgave his brother and he knew that no, all these things you guys were doing, God was sending me. So it's when you are in that season, God is with you and one of the ways of God is to hide you. He hides you so that the enemy does not abort. He hides even Jesus. When you read Matthew chapter 2, he, he, he sent an angel and appeared to Joseph in a dream. Joseph the, uh, the, 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 who become later the husband to Mary and say take the child Jesus and the mother and go into Egypt and stay there until I send away. What is God doing? He's hiding because the time has not yet come. How are we together? God hide. Even it's a mystery. It's called one day by God's grace we must have a subject called the hidden mystery of God. God knows Moses is the deliverer of the children of Israel out of Egypt. But God is hiding Moses and make him to be in the house of Pharaoh. Grown there, educated there, empowered there. All of those things are hidden mystery. Because if the devil knew and you are in Pharaoh's house, they have to kill you. But it does not know. It's called a hidden mystery, a hidden wisdom of God, where God hide his doings from the person themselves, from the people around, even from the devil himself. He does not know what they're doing. Why is this guy here? He's part of God's mystery, preparing the person until their season comes in the name of Jesus. God hide. That's why he hide even Jesus. He did not reveal. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, Number A, they say if they knew that this crucifying the Lord of glory will bring such a movement that will stay until he returns again and many people will say the devil will not have killed Jesus. But they did not know because what it was hidden from them. So the Lord may hide you even by cutting off relationship that will be hindrances to your appearance in the future. But by the time of cutting off those relationships, it may be painful to show that this one is gone. It came through betrayal. It came through gossip. It came through slander. It came through uh, uh, getting a contract and they cut you out. It brought pain. But God is working beyond the scene and taking out all of these people. Because two years later, when your greatness appears, those people are not needed. Those people will become a hindrance. Hence, he's removing them before time. So other relationships, when you don't understand, but God is cutting and sending people away from you, you, it is the working of God. He's hiding something from you, hiding something from them, hiding something from the enemy, so that those people are not part of the greatness where God is taking you, because they will become a hindrance to your future. I hope you understand. It's called hiddenness. So prior to your season of breakthrough or season of manifestation, God coming for you, please be assured that God is with you. He was with Joseph. God is with you. He was with Moses. God is with you. He was with Abraham. God is with you. He was with Jesus. God is with you in that time. You are not alone. You may be crying, but he's there with you. You have been frustrated, but he's there with you. They reject you. You are not alone. God is with you. Even your own relative can reject you. God is 
deal with you is on your side. There is something you may not understand by that time, but later on you will understand. Uh, Joseph did not understand why his brother are rejecting they have got a hatred. But later on when they came and bow, he said, rise up. Am I in a place of God? You meant it for evil. God meant it for good. He was sending me ahead in order to save many people alive. He understood. But when he was being rejected, he would thought, God, you have forsaken me. Where are you, God? Why are people betraying me? Why are people rejecting me? Why are my relatives forsaking me? Where are you? It is the working of God. Not everything is an enemy attack. When you have arrived, you will understand that it was the working of God. So he hides you from yourself so that you don't manifest yourself before time. I hope you understand. He hides you from people so that they don't push you into your season of manifestation before your time. He hides you from the devil so that there is working and your purpose is not aborted and frustrated in the name of Jesus. He hides you until the time of manifestation comes. He hides you in the name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord. And when that season comes, no one stops it. He works beyond the scene and he said, now it's time for Joseph that have been prepared, for Joseph that have protected, for him now to come on the scene. How will he come if I give a dream to somebody as another part of Egypt? The word will not be fulfilled. How do I do it? Let me bring a dream to the highest person in the land called Pharaoh. He brought the dream into Pharaoh. Pharaoh called magician. God hide and switch off the magician. Nobody could interpret. Then they said there is a guy. They said call him. They call him. Yesterday he was in prison. He has shaved. Now he has appeared before the king. He interpret. He said, is there a wise person like this in Egypt? Who else can we put in charge? You are the one. The word of God is fulfilled. By that time, that's what I am referring to. The curtain over Joseph's life open. And no one can shut it. But prior to that, God was working with him. And the assurance that God gives you is that he's with you. Hallelujah. In your season before God comes through for you, please be aware you are not alone. God is with you. And what I am saying when you are going through that time, this what I am saying here may not be good news because you are in pain. God, I don't know where my rental money will come, but you say I will become a, a woman of influence and a millionaire. It does not make sense. What I am saying, if tomorrow you don't pay rent, but next year when the curtain is open, even the failure of paying rent, that pain is gone. When you have arrived, you understand why God was doing all of these things and hiding you like that. He was preparing you for that season. When the season arrives, no one will stop it in the name of Jesus. Even yourself, you cannot stop it. When the season arrived for Zechariah, we did in part two. He wanted to interfere. Even himself could not. God mute him. He became mute because he wanted to interfere with the season of his appearance. And when the breakthrough has come, now your mouth can open because you wanted to interfere. Are we together? In that season, rest assured, God is with you. You will go through pain, but God is with you. Your friend will betray you, but God is with you. And all these things, it's not that Joseph is looking for them. Are we together? They are the one coming to Joseph. Are we together? When somebody betray, it's not say, guys, next week is my betrayal week. Come and betray me. No. It just happened. And it's hurtful, I am telling you. But when you are out there, you'll say, God, I thank you. This person, that person, that person, they are not part of my life. But they are your children. Receive them and bless them. But they are not part of this. Now I understand why you cut them off. In that season. 
while I was waiting on you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But God was with him. And I'm telling you, when you see God in that season, he just gives you a picture. He can show you a picture. Uh, what, uh, Isaiah 46, our last scripture before we pray, verse 10 says, Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, Things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure, is declaring from, declaring the end. He's saying to Joseph in 37, this is where I'm taking you. And when he's saying it, it's like in the beginning. So how the outcome will be, God has already determined it. But in the journey here, whether betrayal, whether forsaken, God is with you, the destination will be rich in the name of of Jesus, declaring the end, how things will happen, how, what will be the outcome. God has already declared it, sign and seal. How things will come out in the name of Jesus. So in that season, you are not alone. God is with you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Shall we rise up on our feet? Father, we thank you for the assurance reassurance, confidence that you, we are not alone. You are with us in the name of Jesus. So I pray here, Lord, for every life. Many are trusting you in terms of the business empire you've revealed to occupy and do business as per your revelation, inspiration into people's life and see this is where you will be. But where they are now, it's like they are hidden. So I am praying for strength. I am praying for guidance. I am praying that they shall not get worried, but encouraged by you. Strengthen in the Lord. That as they call upon your name in prayer, let them be strengthened. Let more revelation, let them more revelation, guidance come. As they serve you, may you resist the doors as a voice before your throne on their behalf. As they work on their gift, there is a time where the gift will be a door opener. And they will appear before great men. There will be a time where kings, captain of industry in finances will look for them. People in the marketplace will go and look for them. There is a time where the curtain will be open over somebody's life and their life will turn around for good in the name of Jesus. So I am asking you for your grace over their lives, Lord. Strengthen them. Empower them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Father, you did not leave and forsake Joseph. You will not forsake them. Moses was not forsaken, you will not forsake them. Jesus was not forsaken, you will not forsake them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray for courage. I pray for empowerment. I pray for the backing of God. The reassurance that you are there with them. They are not alone in the name of Jesus. Touch the lives of every woman here today, empowered by you. Every man here be empowered by you in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. We pray, Lord, any interference of darkness will not succeed because you, you are of your hidden wisdom over their lives in your working in them. In the name of Jesus. Anybody under any demonic attack, today we declare, let that attack come to an end by the power in the name of Jesus. May Yahweh intervene and defeat the witchcraft power, the foundational power in Jesus' name. Let there be free talk and somebody's career be loose, somebody work be loose, somebody business be loose, somebody marriage be loose, somebody divine opportunity be loose to materialize in the name of Jesus. Hear the prayer and bless the lives of your people. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, we invoke your blessing over their lives and their household in Jesus' name. Preserve them, Lord, in the day and the night. I pray may your face shine over them. God, be gracious to them. May you lift up your countenance toward every single one of them and give them your peace, even in this season, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus.